So today I'm going to be talking about my wealth structuring process. As you can see, I'm still on vacation here, so I've ditched the blazer for a comfortable and cool linen shirt. Uh, one of the questions that I get asked most by prospective clients is, what is my wealth structuring process? As many of you know, wealth structuring is a term I use to describe setting up a family trust or foundation for a client. And so since I figured I get asked this question a lot, I thought I would do a video on it. As always, before I get into the video though, a little cover my own ass, a disclaimer, this presentation is prepared for educational purposes only. This presentation is not legal or tax advice, nor is it to be construed as such. Each individual circumstances are different. You should seek legal and or tax advice to address any specific questions you may have. So wealth structuring is the art of designing and implementing structures to hold and manage your worldwide wealth so you can grow it, preserve it, protect it, and pass it on to your heirs in a tax efficient manner according to your wishes. Now, most commonly this involves setting up a family trust or a family foundation as the backbone of any family's wealth structure. Now normally under that foundation or trust there's a number of holding companies uh, and investments, things like that, but the primary backbone of, of any wealth structure is generally a family trust or foundation in a, 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 in a, in a jurisdiction that offers you know, robust estate planning laws, succession planning possibilities, wealth protection laws, privacy, and of course tax benefits. Now, I'm going to get into, I have a three-step process for doing wealth structuring. And the first is education, the second is planning, and the third is implementation. I think a lot of people that have dealt with advisors that set up trusts and foundations they've probably seen that most advisors, the planning aspect is sort of an afterthought, right? They want to get hired to draft the trust or draft the foundation and who's going to manage it and the distribution provisions and all this kind of stuff is sort of secondary, right? It's like it's information they need to know in order for the drafting. I go about it completely differently because in my mind, drafting the document is the easy part. In fact, I don't even do that. When, when I set up a wealth structure, we hire the best lawyers in the given jurisdiction where that wealth structure is going to be to draft it based on the plan we came up with. Now, like I said, the first thing we do is education. We want to make sure our client understands what they're setting up. Two is planning, and that's a two-step process. is information gathering and then actually designing the structure and implementation, which is actually setting it up. Now, in step one, the first thing I want to do is make sure my client understands what it is that they're setting up. I've seen so many instances where clients have set up structures with other advisors and don't really understand what it is that they set up or how it works or anything like that, which is really unfortunate, right? Because a lot of times it leads the client into getting into trouble because they do something with the structure that they shouldn't have done, or they don't fully understand what it's capable of and so they don't reap the full benefits of, of, of the structure. And I think this is something a lot of advisors really fall short on is they don't educate the client. I, in fact, I'm guilty of it when I first started in this business and then I realized that the clients weren't getting the most out of the structures and didn't have a full understanding and that's really too bad. So this is something I've put a lot of emphasis on in my career. And so one of the, what we want to educate the clients on is how trust and foundation structures work and to give them some examples of, of common provisions and, and even some very custom provisions so they can understand everything that's possible within trusts and foundations. And then we also want to inform them of the various parties involved, their respective duties, responsibilities, and rights, right? So in, in the case of a foundation, we want to inform them of the council and who they are and what their responsibilities are and who a guardian is and what they do and what their rights and responsibilities are and the beneficiaries. And, and all of those things so that they have a full understanding of how this works. I think that's super, super important. And especially because if you're setting this up for, for example, for a patriarch of a family, they also need to like tell their wife and kids about this, right? Like they need to have an understanding. So the education is super important in my book. And we do this primarily through our proprietary trusts and foundations primer that we've drafted in, in a very easily understandable language 
and then also through phone video calls and or in-person education sessions. So I, we make sure that uh, even for the most advanced clients that we always do at least one education session with a client and, and, and explain the, the trust and foundation structure to them, let them ask any questions. Sometimes it's more, sometimes we actually host training sessions with the whole family so other generations can also gain this information. It's typically common with, with a lot of family office clients. So once we've done the education, we move on to the planning. And the first step is information gathering, right? I feel like so many advisors just have a, a simple questionnaire that's like, okay, you know, who, who are your kids? Where do you live? What are your citizenships? And I, we have those questionnaires too, but we go far beyond that. We do a lot of information gathering in person and, and on the phone and calls because I need to understand the person's situation in order to be able to pick the right jurisdiction and the right structure and the right provisions for them. And that goes beyond just knowing what they own and who their family members are, right? I wanna understand the client's personal situation. I wanna know their goals, their lifestyle, their desires, their preferences, their hopes, their fears, because all of this stuff plays into the wealth structure and how it needs to operate and where it needs to be located. It's super important to understand, to have a whole picture of the client's situation. And then we need to learn about the client's family dynamics and the personal and professional relationships that they have that are gonna have an impact on this structure. And then we need to look at, okay, who are, who's the management gonna be, the guardian, the beneficiaries, and so on and so forth. And then we need to know their citizenships, their residencies, what roles they're gonna have in the structure, and determine what types of assets the structure is gonna own and where those assets are located because again that all plays into where the structure is going to be located and then of course identifying the goals and objectives of the structure then once we have this information only then do i even move on to starting to design the structure right and when we design the structure we want to design for example how the structure is managed are they going to use a professional trustee or, or professional counselors in the case of a foundation, or are they gonna self-manage it with family and trusted advisors? What's the management succession gonna be, right? So if uh, somebody resigns or dies or something, how are they gonna be replaced? And that's not something that we can just look at, you know, for the time being while the founder or settler is still alive, but what happens two generations from now? It needs to be able to go for generations without the input of people of, of too many people. It needs to be automatic, right? And then we need to look at whether there is going to be a guardian or protector, right? And if there is, what are their powers going to be? So, you know, typically they have the right to remove or replace a trustee, approve distributions. You can give them the power to approve uh, financial transactions over a certain amount or their approvals required to amend the foundation or trust or redomicile it, but we need to work through what all those powers are gonna be, as well as what the succession is gonna be of the guardian or protector. And then of course, identifying the beneficiaries and identifying when a beneficiary can, can benefit. Is it gonna be completely discretionary? Is, do they have to have attained a certain age beforehand? Do they have to have a certain education requirement, work experience? What, when can they benefit from this? And then also the distribution provisions. Are there gonna be any limits on distributions, for example? A lot of people put in substance abuse provisions, right? So if somebody's like a gambling addict or a drug addict, they can't get distributions other than for treatment potentially. Or no contest clause, right? So if somebody challenges the trust or foundation, they're automatically out. So there's a lot that can be done with the distribution provisions. And then um, What's the longevity of the structure going to be, right? Is this something that's only going to last for the lifetime of the settler and then all the assets are going to be distributed? Or is this going to be something that's multi-generational? And then, of course, determining the jurisdiction is also super important. Um, and then once we've gone through and kind of come up with a preliminary structure, then we normally present that to the client and that goes through some discussion. And... The, the, the structures that seem of most interest, we'll vet those further. And we really go deep into vetting the structure once a client has decided this is what they're interested in. I mean, we evaluate the potential jurisdictions, the entity types, the entity classifications in the relevant jurisdictions, how the entities are taxed, 
the legal and regulatory requirements of the various types of entities in the relevant jurisdictions, how those entities are taxed in those jurisdictions, what compliance requirements there are, if there's any relevant tax treaties, what the administrative burden is, the initial or ongoing costs, what the beneficial owner register situation looks like, whether there's economic substance regulations. We look at all that stuff so that we can give the client a full picture of what a structure in that jurisdiction is going to look like so that they can make an educated decision on what is best for them. And then once they select the final structure and we've, we've, uh, we've settled on that, then we'll provide a final structure summary and structure chart. And the structure su summary is really a description of what the structure is going to look like, how it's going to work, and what its you know, regulatory requirements are, how it's going to be taxed, all that kind of a stuff. Exactly what it sounds like, a structure summary, and then we also provide a structure chart that beautifully depicts the structure, so it's easily to refer to, and, and, and the client has that, and they're available, has that available to refer to. And then we will provide a proposal for implementing the structure. And like I said, we don't implement the structures ourselves in most jurisdictions. We outsource that to top-notch professionals in those jurisdictions, but we will manage that process, right? So if we're outsourcing it, we will help the client select the professionals that we're going to use. We'll go ahead and get the client on board with those professionals. We'll manage the entire relationship. We'll manage the whole implementation process. We'll make sure we review every single document and go through the different rounds of revisions with those professionals to make sure that the structure is in line with what we designed with the client. And once that's all done, we'll deliver it to the client for signature and for, for final implementation, and then the client will be up and running. And then, of course, we stay available to the client you know, on an ongoing basis to answer questions and make any changes to the structure that might be needed in the future. That's one of the things that I think is really important. We build flexibility into all of our structures because you never know when a particular jurisdiction or structure isn't gonna meet the client's needs anymore. We need to amend it or change its location or something like that. So I think it's super important to have an exit strategy and the flexibility to change things around if need be. And that's something that I'm sure, that I'm always sure to build into every single structure because you don't wanna be committed to something forever and not be able to change it, especially in this ever-changing world that we live in. Anyway, I hope that you found this informational and it gives you a little bit more insight into what I do and how I do it. If you have any questions, please feel free to visit us on the web at esquiregroup.com or shoot us an email at info at esquiregroup.com. See ya.